Hello and uh, welcome back. In this example, we're going to design a, a composite beam. Take a look at the problem on the board here. Let me read it to you. Uh, so we have a, a situation where the beams are 10 foot on the center and the uh, span length is uh, simply supported 36 uh, feet and they, uh, it's going to support a concrete 4 inch deep uh, lightweight concrete on uh, a 3 inch deep form steel deck with no shoring. And then it uh, goes on, the dead load is 0.78 kip per foot and the life load is 2 kip per foot. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and select the beam. B, uh, find out the number of a 3 quarter inch diameter uh, hits that we're going to uh, use. And then we're going to compute the uh, deflection for the wet concrete and the life load deflection. And then we're going to check the uh, check for shear and basically design the beam and go through everything. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're gonna, which I already done, put on a board here, we're going to calculate the load. Our dead load is 0.78, life load is 2 kip. In LFRD become, uh, take a look what I have on a board, 1.2 times uh, 0.78 plus 1.6 times life load comes out to 414. And our maximum moment going to come out, m is equal to WL squared divided by 8, which is at the center. So the maximum moment comes out to 670.7 foot kip in load resistant factor design. In a lot of stress design, we basically add both load and we use the same formula to find the moment and the moment comes out to 450.4 uh, foot kip. The first thing we want to find out, we're going to find out the uh, effective uh, flange width. And there's uh, what I have, uh, there's two different ways we can find it. First is going to be the basically uh, Span divided by 4, which is equal 36, and then makes that, make that to an inch, divided by 4, and 108 inch. The second is basically the, uh, the width, the turbatory width, uh, which is ba uh, betwe between two of them, it's based 10 feet. So uh, 10 feet times 12, that's equal 120 inch. And the lower control, so this one going to control, we're going to use this one for a, a flange a width, effective width. E, E, that's the E. So next, we want to find a plastic neutral axis. But before we do that, let's find out what is Y of concrete. The Y of concrete is basically the top of the slab, the distance from top of the slab, to uh, top of the flange. And we have that as, uh, so Y concrete comes out right here. We had uh, 4 inch plus 3 inch makes it 7. 4 plus 3 is equal 7 inch, and that's a Y of concrete. Find a plastic nuclear axis, we find, again, we find A, and A is equal. AS FOI divided by uh, 0.85 F prime C time effective width. And in here, because we don't know the area of the steel we're trying to design that, therefore we're going to go ahead and guess at A. And normally when you want to make a guess at A, you want to put them in, uh, you want your plastic neutral axis be above the flange. So because concrete is very strong in compression and steel is very strong in tension, you really want to have a compression up here and tension down here. Uh, so when you have your neutral axis, tension and compression, they equal out, and that's why they come up with this formula. So let's say come up with the number, and, uh, and let's say A is equal to 2 inches. Go ahead and assume A is equal to uh, 2 inches. Um, We're going to go ahead, since we know our neutral axis is in the concrete, therefore our y1 is equal to 0, and our y2 is equal, based on the formula we have over there, <coughs> is a total of uh, thickness minus a divided by 2, so it's 7 minus a divided by 2, which is equal 7 minus 2 divided by 2, and that comes out to 6 inch. we have enough information to go ahead and select a beam. Our y1 is equal to 0. Our y2 is a 6 inch. 
and this is the MU. So our MU, let me write down here, our MU is uh, 670. Point 0.1 is good, point 0.7 is even better. So now we have this three. We're going to go to uh, uh, table. So if you take a look at table 319 right there, um, and you can see uh, you go through the table, and you go from a 0, and then you go to column where it says 6, and under LFRD, see if you can find a moment bigger than 670. And you want to pick it about uh, probably about 50 to 100 uh, uh, foot cap bigger than what you have. And in this case, we can look at it, we can see uh, 672 will fit perfectly here for us for now. And that comes out to W18 by 46. So based on that table, we're going to go ahead and try W18 by uh, 46. And from table one, we can go ahead and get all the information about W18. For example, I want to know the area comes out to 13.5 uh, inch square. And then your moment inertia are going to come out to. Now we have selected the size of beam. Because this, our, uh, our concrete really is like uh, three and four. And three inch of it is uh, inside of the form, and the other four inch is on top and it's not short, and therefore we'd like to find out how much deflection this wet concrete causes. Because when a concrete is wet, it, need, uh, it doesn't support its own weight until from up maybe about eight, 10 hours later. So therefore, we'd like to know what the deflection this causes. I'm going to raise this board. We're going to calculate the how much we see how much this four inch uh, concrete weighs. So we got four inch divided by 12, and uh, it's a uh, 10 foot time 110 pound per cubic feet. And that give me uh, 413 pound per foot. So now we have that. Let's find out what's the moment caused by this, which is a WO square. So this is a weight of a con wet concrete. And the moment comes out to WO squared divided by 8. And that is uh, 413 times 36 squared divided by 8. So if, we, if I divide this by 1,000, it becomes 0.4. So I want to answer in KIP. And it comes out to 66.9 foot kip. Up there from equation 3-3, uh, we have deflection is equal ML squared divided by C1IX. So we need to find C1. And if we go to uh, figure 3-2, uh, what I have on board, C1 comes out to uh, 161. So now I'm going to plug that back in here, my deflection. So let's plug all this number in. Moment came out to 66.9, multiplied by 36 squared. Divide that by uh, C1, uh, 161, times 712. And that gave out to come out to be uh, 0.76 inch. And if we go with the life load, um, um, so the deflection came out to 0.76. And you really want to see that less than L over 180. L over 180 comes out to. Uh, 36 times 12 divided by uh, 180, that's about. So that comes off with 2.5 inch, and we have 0.76 is less than 
2.5 inch we're good it's not going to be too much look, take a look at table 319 you find out our summation qn came out to be uh, 675 or basically what they have done is uh, summation qn you can even calculate which is the foy time as and which is 13.5 time 50 and that comes out to uh, same as what they got on the table uh, 675 kip we know our a came out to be basically uh, a summation of uh, qn or foy time s and we had wrote the formula down divided by uh, 0.85 F prime C time effective width, and that came out to 675. Divide that by 0.85. Uh, our concrete is 4 KSI time effective width came out to be, uh, we used 108. And that is equal to 1.84, which is less than 4 inches, so we good our plastic neutral axis, it's in the concrete. Uh, and it came out to less than uh, our estimate, which was two inches. So now we're going to go ahead and basically do things over again. But this time, we're going to use A is equal 1.84. Now, since we have A is equal that, I'm going to say our Y1 still is equal zero in this case. Y2 is uh, 7 inch minus 8 divided by 2, which is 7 minus 184 divided by 2, and that is 6.08. And uh, I'm going to go back to table 319 and find uh, phi time mn. We know that uh, we have uh, at, um, take a look at the table. So if you look at the table, you know at 6 we have uh, 762. And at 6.08, we have no clue. We're going to find that out. What is that? And then at uh, 7, we have uh, 8.13. So this is basically linear interpolation and nothing to it. And we've done this many times before. And a formula for that one is... Let me write it down here. Y is equal Y1 time. Okay, so this is, be careful, this is not the same as Y here. This is just for linear inter interpolation. I do have a video on that. So let's say this is a y, uh, Y1 right here. This is a Y itself, and this is Y2. This is a X2, and this will be a X1 over there. No, that would be x, and this will be x1. So we plug all this number in there, and we're going to say, OK, y is going to come out to 7.62 time 7 minus 6.08, and plus y2, 8.13 time 6.08 minus 6 and divided by 7 minus 6 and y comes out to uh, 766.0 foot kip and that's basically taking that from the table we're going to say if we go our y1 is equal 0 and our y2 is 6.08 and that's what it's going to come out to now we know this number is bigger than that number, so it's bigger than uh, 670.7 foot kip, and we OK. This is uh, basically for low resistance factor design. We can do the exact same thing for ASD design, which will be, uh, so if you do the same exact thing going for uh, a lot of stress design, go to the over the next column and plug this number and the moment for that one comes out to uh, 458.9. 458.9, which is bigger than uh, 450, it checks out. See if you can get this number on your own. Uh, do the same exact way I did it, 
and you should be fine. That'd be good practice for you. Let me erase this board. Gonna this was based on y1 is equal zero and y2 is equal six. Some designer might wanna reduce their number of summation q in so they can use less number of a share connector. Uh, and we share set. So if you wanna do that, that's fine. You say this is a little bit uh, over. We can go back, look at the table, and we say why not bring down uh, y1 all the way to uh, uh, 0 0.0. 0. And if we do that, let me erase this board. So to figure out how many shares that we need, we can use this number, which I would like to use, or you can go ahead and look at the table and say, okay, this is too, too high. Maybe we can go pick something uh, a lower. You can almost go down to y1 is equal 0 0.303 and use uh, summation q and is equal 492. It's up to you. So if I use this one, and we're going to go ahead, let's just use this one, and let's go to a table. Um, if we go to table 321, as you can see on the board, and we can use um, three-quarter inch stud, again, based on your preference and your design experience and the job requirement. Three-quarter inch is a good one. And then you go over and uh, to the uh, right column, Use lightweight concrete at uh, 110 pounds per cubic feet. And if our F prime C is weak of 4 KSI, and line those up, and you end up with 21.2. Uh, so we're going to say Q1 N is equal 21.2. Q N is equal 21.2. And we want to know how many number we need. We basically divide those number, uh, we those two number by each other. So it's a number required is equal uh, 675 divided by 21.2, and that comes out to 31.03. So we're going to use uh, 32, uh, 32 on each side of the maximum moment. So that's section B. Let's move on to the next one. Well, right, we're going to go ahead and calculate the deflection, see if we're going to meet the deflection criteria. So L over 360 is equal to uh, 36 times 12 divided by 360, and that comes out 1.2 inch. To calculate the uh, deflection. Now, the deflection is going to be calculated different for composite beam. We want to be, what is our L over 360? It's our limit, so it's 1.2 inches. But the equation for deflection is, is uh, right here. It's on the board. Delta is equal ML divided by, uh, that's ML squared divided by C1, moment inertia of lower bound. And remember, this uh, uh, we want a deflection due to a uh, life load only. So we've got to find ML. Our ML life load is equal to uh, two kips. So it's going to be WL squared divided by 8, which is equal to 2 times 36 squared divided by 8. And that comes out to 324 foot kip. 324 foot kip. And so we got that. We know C1 came out to 161. So we know that one. I of lower bound inertia. If we go to the table, uh, look at the table right here, table uh, 320. So that's going to be table 320. And if you look at it, again, we have to do some uh, linear interpolation. We're going to have uh, so six. Different color. At six, we have two thousand. At six point zero eight, we don't know. And six and a half, twenty ninety.
20, 14.4 inch by power 4. So now we're going to go ahead and plug that back in here. And that's going to come out to 324 multiplied by 36 square. Divide that by 161 times 20, 2014.4 and equal 1.29, which uh, kind of a little bit bigger than 1.2 inches. We're cutting it close, and but still acceptable within that range, plus or minus acceptable. So the next we're going to go ahead, we're going to calculate the shear. Let me erase the board. So the shear due to the load comes out VU equals WL divided by 2, or just find the reaction in this two corner. And W came out to be uh, 414 times 36. Divide that by 2. And uh, VU is equal 74.5 kip. And here, VA in a allowable stress design comes out to uh, 2.78 times 36 divided by 2, and VA comes out to 50 kip. Now, if we go into the table, table 3-2, table 3-2, we're going to find out that uh, phi times VN is equal 195. So shear capacity of that beam is 195, which is more than 74 the share due to the load, then we okay. Same thing here, if you go to the next column over, we're going to find out that uh, Vn divided by omega is equal to uh, 130 kip, and that's the capacity of that beam, which is bigger than that load, and we good okay. So that's how it's done. Hope you liked it. If this was useful, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.